Let's get this party started. All right, welcome to our Owls Trading Psychology and Risk Management class. Thanks for joining. This is probably the one of the most important sessions we'll be a part of because risk management is the most important aspect of trading. Let's get this party started. Remember, make sure you are watching the stream see everything all right so first things first you have to ask yourself this what is your specialty are you a better day trader or a swing trader and this can obviously be determined by your normal life right so do you work full-time do you work part-time student no that's the first question right so if you're working full-time then obviously maybe day trading is not the best idea you want to be a swing trader. You want to hold positions overnight and not really worry about it every five minutes. So figure that out. You know, are you a better day trader or a swing trader? What works best for you? FOMO. Obviously, this is the worst feeling in trading. You want to absolutely avoid it. There is like 252 or 54 days of trading days, right? And there's so many days. So many stocks, tons and tons of opportunities. So if you miss one trade, honestly, not even that big of a deal. There's plenty more out there, right? You just got to move on. Now triggers. So this is where, you know, our watch list where we say Apple calls above 138, puts below 138, 137, right? Don't enter a trade a few points short just to get the extra couple of dollars couple of dollars right so meaning let's say you know, we say apple falls above 138.73 okay, and that's that's our trigger and let's say apple is five cents below but you're like mm, it's getting close to this tr trigger i'm gonna enter because the premium is a little cheaper no you don't want to do that because you haven't had a confirmation over that resistance or confirmation below that support, right? So you can get easily baked out. You would rather pay a little more of that premium because you have confirmation of that candle breaking above that resistance or breaking below that support. So don't be cheap about your premium. You know, it's not going to move that much more, right? Now, again, with the next point, for the alerts, always start small, right? Never put in what you cannot afford to lose. And this is very, very important, right? And I say this every single day. If we don't put on the alert a specific stop loss, this is how you think of a trade. How much am I willing to risk per alert, right? So let's say I make a Apple 140 call for $2. Right. It let, so I'm going to be like, okay, well, if I buy five contracts, that's a thousand dollars. Right. So I know how many contracts I'm buying. I am willing to lose $400 out of that 1000. So I have a 40% stop loss. So the fact that I know exactly the amount I can lose, or I'm fine with losing. I have no worry. And if it hits my stop loss, it hits my stop loss. There's nothing you can do, right? The market will do what it wants to do. No, we are putting out trades and you are making trades based on the best probability by looking at charts, looking at flow. But there's also trades that we just completely YOLO, right? Where it's just like, okay, well, I don't even care about this. But the ones that we alert and the ones that you guys enter, it's just the best probability based on looking at charts or flow. So whatever happens, happens and you can't be mad about that right now you can obviously be mad about you know oversizing right let's say you have a thousand dollar account mm -hmm. and you put eight hundred dollars in the trade and you don't have a stop loss and blow that 800 well your account's now <coughs> down 80 percent right you always want to ask yourself once you enter that trade how much am i willing to risk per trade right as your account grows, this doesn't mean your position should be increasing. 
right? Obviously, yeah. So once your account grows, you have the ability to buy five more contracts, 10 more contracts. But you got to realize, are you ready to be down five times more, 10 times more if that trade doesn't go your way, right? Just because, you know, let's say your account went from 5,000 to 8,000. Don't put your size from five to eight or five to 10, whatever, whatever the case may be, right? Remember, the larger accounts, the larger potential losses you know there's a lot of people that say oh well it's easy you know if you have a much bigger account you, know, you can risk a lot more no that's not true that is absolutely not true i mean even for an account like mine you know i'm gonna, not going to give you a number the number of you know my account but i you guys know i still don't go for the 100 percent, 200 percent wins you guys see me take out 10 percent, 15 percent, right you know I'll buy alert for $1.75. It's $1.86. I'll sell 10 out of 15, right? I like to compound my gains. I would rather have a smooth line up on a graph than a roller coaster, right? I don't want to be up 200 on Monday, down 1,000 on Tuesday, up 300 on Wednesday, up 50 on Thursday, and then down 200 on Friday, right? It doesn't work like that. I would rather be up 100 Monday, up 50 Tuesday, let's just say down 20 Wednesday, so on and so forth. You want that consistent gains and small losses, right? And you will always want your profits to outweigh your losses. And here's another thing. If you've, if you, let's say you have a daily goal of, let's say 200 for the week, right? There's five trading days in the week. So that means you're, that's $40 a day. Let's say Monday through Wednesday, you hit your goal. $200, you made it, you're done. You necessarily need to trade Thursday and Friday. No, you don't have to trade. You already hit your goal, right? There's no reason for you to give up all those gains. Now, I see a lot of people uh, you know, on Twitter, social media, whatever that I've seen say, hey, I was up 2000 you know, on Wednesday and it's Friday and I just blew it all. Why not just keep that 2000? You know, once Thursday and Friday come up, expirations get closer, right? Beta starts really hitting these contracts, right? So it be, the trades become more risky unless, unless you put more time, but you're adding more premium. Just get off, turn off the screens, enjoy what you made this week, move on to the next, right? So if you hit your goal, on a certain day, if you hit your weekly goal or if you hit your daily goal, why, why buy another alert, right? Just end the day. That's it. You don't want to lose those profits. Over trading, also revenge trading. So this is something that lots and lots of traders do. And this connects with FOMO, right? The more stocks trade, the greater risk stress you're adding yourself start with two to three stocks and don't start with stocks like tesla and you know the big the big cap stocks right the ones that move like crazy start with apple amd spy qqq start with those see how they move get comfortable right so just try picking two out of those four stocks and learn how they move right? yeah let's make sure you guys are on mute okay it's not a big deal but we're good where was i yeah start two to three stocks get comfortable with them and trade them until you are comfortable moving on to the next right emotions emotions is my number one pointer in this class as I've said multiple times, I know it's hard for beginners and this market has been crazy, very volatile. And I understand that emotions get the best out of everyone, but I am telling you, it will save you so much money, especially if you know how much you're willing to risk per play. You cannot have emotions while trading, right? It leads to more losses, stress, and the thought of, I need to make up my losses back ASAP. Let's say you let's say you're down 200. Okay? Let's say you're down 200 and you and this thought comes up of 
I need to make this up. I need to at least break even. That 200 can turn into negative 400, right? Because you sized up on the next alert saying, okay, if I get this one right, I'll break even. I will break even and I'll be good. It doesn't work like that. If you're down 200 and you know that's like the max loss you can take, just end the day. Listen, you're gonna ha every day is not going to be a good day. Okay? If everyone can be profitable every single day, this will be everyone's full-time job. No one will be working in this world except they'll just be trading. Right? You have a bad day, turn off the screen, reset, review later in the day what you did wrong. You know, don't automatically go and see what you did wrong because it's going to stress you out even more. Take a break, go outside, take a walk, relax, you know, go back to your full-time job, whatever the case may be. Just don't look at stocks for a couple hours. That's why I always tell everyone when the day is over, get off the screen, right? Let your brain rest because, you know, you're on from 930 to 4 every day. It takes a massive toll on your brain, right? So didn't hit your goal. If you had a losing day, that's okay. It happens. You make it up next day. Now, you never, ever get greedy. The pigs always get watered greed kills, right? You see profits, you take profits, all right? Yes, I know you want to hit those 100%, 50%, 75%. Now, if you have bigger accounts, you have the ability to have runners, right? But let's just say you don't, okay? See profits. You take it and you go, right? Compound, okay? $50 a day is $12,600 extra in your pocket. $100 a day is $25,000. $250 a day is $63,000, okay? $500 a day is $126,000 a year. You get my point, right? You don't need to hit the $1,000 a day, $2,000 a day. It's not going to happen, okay? Set realistic goals, okay? Now, in order for you to make, hit these goals, you always have to study as well. You know, study the market, see what's going on, you know, read the newsletters. You know, the newsletter is there to understand what exactly has been going on in the market. You know, why, why has the market been going down? Is it because of inflation? Is it because of some news-related you know, disease? Is it because of TNX, the treasury bonds, right? Always understand these terms because they will help you become a better trader, right? So when we talk about, you know, treasury bonds are going lower. Okay. Um, yeah, study terms, right? And your treasury bonds, you know, if we talk about those, if they're going lower, you expect the market to go higher. The treasury bonds are going higher. You expect the market to go lower. Some people don't really understand that, right? So we put in the chat, you're going to start learning more and more terms. So keep studying the market, keep understanding what these different terms, I guarantee you it will make you a much better trader. Number four, never care about other people's profits. Now, this doesn't mean, you know, you don't, you know, say, hey, congrats, like great trade, great, you know, great profits. Don't be an asshole, right? Congratulate them. But don't make yourself feel like you have to be like them. You know, if you see someone make 5,000, right, that could be 2% of their portfolio, right? And don't be, you know, sad if you made $100. That $100 could be 20% of your whole portfolio. So technically, you had a much bigger gain. And the person who made 5000 on his or her account, right? So don't always look at people's profits and wishing, oh, I want to be like him or her, right? Just focus on yourself. Focus on your account. Again, you can always congratulate them. It's not a big, you know, be happy for them. But don't compare yours to theirs, right? You don't know their account size, right? But how to manage contracts. Now, this is if you are not trimming any contracts, right? So if you're up 25%, okay, you move these contracts to break even. That way, 
Now, I don't necessarily do this one. So if you have 25%, I'm not going to move them to break even. I want to move it to at least 10% because I want to lock in profits, right? I don't want to go up 25% to stopping at break even. Now, you guys do see me trimming contracts, right? And then my runners, I will have a stop at break even because I don't want to lose my profits, right? Now, if you're up 25%, I want you to move them to 10%, right? Not break even because again, you want to at least make some profits. Now, if you're up 50%, and this varies, this is just a general rule. You can always adjust it yourself, uh, but this is just a general rule. If you're up 50%, move your stops to 25%. So that way you're locking in 25% because some people say, hey, I was up 50%. I wasn't looking at it. I didn't. Or I thought I was gonna get more. I just lost all my gains. Now I'm down 60%. What do I do? Should I hold or should I sell for a loss? What do I do? Well, if you know how to manage contracts, move your stops. Move this top to 25% if you're up 50%. If you're up 75%, move this top to 50%. Now again, you don't have to do this. You can move your stop to 60%, whatever the case may be. Now, if you're up 100% and sell half your position and let the rest ride. As complete runners then that that's just like the greatest thing like for example tomorrow for snapchat by the way congrats on everyone for hitting on snapchat what you can do if you have multiple contracts sell half and let the rest run for free or you can let them rest you know run for i don't know 50 percent uh stop right so this is how to manage this on specific contracts okay earnings Yes, I know we played Snapchat earnings. We played Netflix earnings. The general rule is we, it's a 50-50 bet, right? So whenever there's earnings, yes, as much as I, was, I want to tell you guys what I think, I have no idea. No one has an idea. It's literally like going to Vegas drunk and playing roulette, right? And with flow, no matter what flow is telling me, before earnings, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. It could look so bullish on flow. The stock after earnings can tank 20%. Or here's another thing. As a macro expective, a perspective, for example, LRCX, right? A lot of people were talking about chip shortage, exposure to China, negative uh, 20% in forward guidance. When you hear all that, like damn this stock is for sure gonna tank right because you see amd you see nvidia you see all these other semiconductors that are getting hit right so obviously lamb research lrcx being in that industry you're like well it's gonna fall like them right no the stock went up over 10 percent today you just don't know it's seriously a coin flip so if you want to play earnings Expect a hundred percent loss. You know, if you made your gains from the week and you you're able to lose the full amount and you'll still be profitable at the end of the day, then yeah, play it. Why not? Right? But again, it's literally like going to Vegas drunk and just betting on some random thing in roulette. Same thing, 50-50. Small wins. There's absolutely nothing wrong with small wins, right? Again, it just comes back to compound, right? You're just compounding gains. You don't want your portfolio to look like a roller coaster, right? You want steady gains. You don't have to trade every day either. If you did well for three straight days, take the next day off. You don't want to risk blowing your profits, right? Or size lightly, right? So if the first three days you were sizing with five contracts, major gains, the fourth day say, okay, well, I don't want to blow, you know, my profits. I'll just buy one or two contracts, have a tight stop loss, knowing that I will still secure my gains for the week. Right? So there's absolutely nothing wrong with small gains. Yes. With social media, everyone posting these profits or whatever, who cares? It does not matter. Focus on yourself. Right? And especially in this market of how volatile it is. Trades can easily go green to red right? So don't expect always, well, I'm only up 15%. I want more. I want more. I want more. I've seen a lot of trades go from 15% up 
to down negative 40%. Okay. And I trim. I'm like, okay, well, I trim 15%. I have runners break even. Whatever happens, happens. Right. I secured my gains. And then the next day I see my position, if I held, would be down 60%. I would have blown all my profits. Right. Take what the market gives you, or it will take it right back from you. Stop losses. Always have a stop loss, either mentally or set your broker. Right. So this goes back, you know, if I say mentally, it goes back to once you make a trade on the alert, ask yourself, how much am I willing to lose on this trade? Once you have that answer, go to your broker and type the stop loss, right? And place it. And now sometimes the market, you know, it gets volatile, right? And, you know, you might get filled at a different price. So if you're, if you don't have that many positions, right? And if you have one or two positions and you're able to just stare at that contract, we don't really necessarily have to have a stop loss. You can just look at that contract and say, okay, well, it's getting close to my stop. I'm just going to manually close it here. But if you can't manage it, right? If you have six or seven positions and you kind of get distracted, well, set that stop. Okay. And whatever happens, happens. Not a big deal. And if you don't have a stop, then that's just the risk you took, right? That was, that's just your decision. It. Oh, that that is it. Um, okay. Well, ask me questions. What questions do you guys have? Don't be shy. Um, can I chime in here for a second, Kian? Oh, widow, please. Yes. All right, guys. My name is Chris, um, also known as the widow, and I am here for any of your risk management questions. If you have, I mean, a lot of you have already DM'd me and we've talked, but if you have any questions during trading days. DM me, that gives Kian a chance to concentrate on finding trades for us. Yeah, please take advantage of Widow. He's always here to help you guys. Also, I want to talk about um, trading as it's your money. I want you to understand this. You don't have to sit here and wait for Kian to take his trades off or alert of sell or um i mean if you feel the trades going against you you can get out it's your money also if you feel the trade you want to hold on to it a little longer than key and take says you could do that too again it's your money it's all about your risk tolerance well that's about it What's up, guys? What's up, Elgin? Hey, Kian, great class, man. Thank you. Thank you. Great class. Also, another thing that I want to tell you guys, when you're looking at certain levels, certain triggers, right? You're, let's say, we say Apple calls about, uh, about 140, for example. So Apple is approaching to 140. Something that has helped me a lot Think about that trade one, two, three, four times before you enter. Try to think, like try to doubt yourself, put yourself in doubt. And remember, you can always play puts. So not just look at Apple calls above 140. Also look, okay, why if 140 is not doing the job? Why is it losing a strength at that point? Then also look for puts. Look for both. You have no idea how many times I go and I say, I'm looking at QQQ, whatever, 262 calls. And I keep looking at it and I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm not too convinced now. I might just keep on that one. And I think like, well, maybe this thing is gonna come down here because you know, calls are not looking too hot. Too, too hot. So what's the next stop? How much more down could QQQ go? Do I have room to still enter inputs or did I miss my chance? So keep that in mind. Don't just like stick to one trade and like have to enter that because that's the only setup. I know we all like to play our setups. We all like our charts. We all like the thing that we're right, but keep that in mind. Just keep your options open. Yeah, good point. Good point for sure. 
Hey, Kian, I just wanted a question here. Whenever it comes to gauging levels on breaking support or resistance, is it ever just enough that it just quickly dips down or above the level? Or do you think it has to completely be above or past it? Like if it just nudges that like 0.01 down or up, is it good? Or if it bounced back, like how how should we commit to that or not? Yeah, for me, you know, um, definitely a full candle close you know, above that resistance or below that support, right? Now, I would recommend when you're on these levels, don't be on the one minute, right? Because the one minute, there's a lot of noise, right? You know, you can see one candle you know, go up, one candle go down very quickly. I would recommend either the three minute or five minute. Now that's just my personal preference, but with a three minute and five minute, you know, you can really understand of where the candle actually is because it's, it's five minutes of data going into that candle because one minute can easily go above. Like, let's say, you know, you're in calls, right? Well, that one minute candle can easily go above uh, your resistance, but that next one minute candle can just completely break below. But if you see a five minute candle go above your resistance, well, there is more data in that candle, right? So I would like to see a full candle below for a support or a full candle above the resistance. And another thing, always watch for volume, right? You need volume for these candles to go to push higher or lower, right? Because if, it, if the volume is light, right? It's not going to have enough momentum to carry, right? And another thing is that let's say you're playing Apple, right? Apple's a tech stock. Obviously, you want to have QQQ on the side, right? Because you want to see where the indice is going as well as the stock that you're trading, right? Now, that's a little extra, but if we're just specifically talking about triggers, I want that full candle close above on that three minute or five minute candle if that makes any sense hey um i got a question about charting when you're charting do you um do you do you like draw your lines based on the like the low of the of the wick or like the body uh wick wick i'm gonna show you guys when we do our watch list okay yeah, wick because there there is still you know there was still uh, buyers and sellers at those wicks, right? And then are you charting usually by the uh, five or the ten? So I chart on the fifteen minute for a watch list, uh, but okay. now when it's intraday when the market is actually open, I will be on the five minute, the five minute chart because if I'm scalping now if I'm you know finding swings I'm not gonna be on a five minute, ten minute, fifteen minute whatever I'm gonna be on the four hour or the daily chart or weekly. As a matter of fact, because some stocks are so low that we have to go to the weekly. And how far back will you chart? Like, will you go back like a whole year? It depends. It, it really depends. You have to look at the, the chart and see where has it been struggling? Where has it been consolidating and finally breaking out or breaking below? Right? So let's say the stock, you know, has been super volatile in the last three months, right? But then you look a year back and we're at the same level. Well, we know that back a year ago, this stock had trouble either breaking higher or lower at these two specific levels. So if we break one of those levels, well, history usually repeats itself, right? So maybe that was a year ago, right? But now we're back at the same level. So it's kind of like, okay, last year, Apple had trouble breaking 150, but once it broke 150 to the upside, it pushed a lot higher. Let's say we're apples at one fifth or like one forty nine ninety five. History usually repeats itself, right? Apple one fifty was a huge resistance last year. We're back at it again. So if Apple breaks this one fifty level, you'd expect more upside, right? So it really depends right. on how far you go into the chart. All right, I get it. Thanks. Hmm? You know. Kian raises a good point about something. I want you guys to understand something that if you are scalping and you're trading on the one or the five minutes, how long do you think you should be in that trade? 
Well, you know, anywhere between one and maybe 10 minutes. Now, if you're swing trading and you're looking at the daily chart, that's what you should be looking at. If you're swing trading, and you're looking at the one minute chart. There's no reason to be looking at the one minute chart. It is so noisy. Also, guys, one thing. Remember a rule of thumb that I have, and I think Widow and Kian do it too. When volume is low, whether it's in the market or a stock, if you are going to play a short experience, you have two options. If you want to play the breakout, put time. Because I think if it doesn't have the volume that you want, that means that if you're in calls, a few sellers are going to come and they're really going to mess your trade. So you either put more time or you stick with the rule that I have for zero DTs or like short expiration, same week. I have low volume days. I only play reversals. I literally don't care how much it goes up. I just wait for it to go to my 200 EMA or my next persistence, same in the way down. And I play reversals. When I see a lot of volume and I am confident that the trend, the momentum is there, then I play the breakouts. So be careful with that. Hey, I had a quick question about when you see volume, like if you're sitting watching a, a one minute or three or five minute and you've got, you know, all the, all the candles are showing pretty much the same volume. They don't fluctuate very much, but then you see one really big candle with volume. But it's just isolated. Does that tell you anything or does that, you know, do you have to look at time and sales to determine, you know, which direction it could go next based off of that one really big candle. For me personally, whenever I see these type of big candles, like I saw was one of them I saw recently where you just see like a thousand percent above average. And, and luckily I have you know multiple monitors. So I'll quickly go on the flow and type in Sava and see if there's any like unusual activity. Um, but now let's, let's just say we don't have the flow in front of us, right? We're just looking at one chart and I see you know, a thousand volume on that one minute or five minute candle, right? Now I won't, and let's say it's like 85% bullish, right? I won't enter on that candle, right? I want to see if it actually, you know, finds a base, right? Is it going to pull back a bit and then make that next move? Okay. I'm not going to chase that candle. It is, it is something to note, right? Where you have to understand, okay, well, there is a lot of um, volume on that specific handle, but if you're looking at your levels, now if you have levels set, well, is it going to actually break above this specific resistance or if it breaks below this support? Because it could just be that one candle for some odd reason, but it could easily uh, pull back at the same time. You got to be careful with those type of candles. I kind of just like ignore, not ignore it, but I'll wait for the next candle to see if there's actually a continuation of it. Yeah. And if you hear us sometimes in voice, when we say, watch this thing shooting back up or shooting back down, like after a big green candle or a red candle, that's usually like a one minute candles five. You're going to see a lot of volume coming suddenly, but it's not going to hold. So the price comes back either down or up at the, like right away. So a lot of the times you're going to hear us saying, look at this coming back down. Like you see a big green candle on QQQ and we're going to tell you, look, it's going to come back down. So if it's a one minute volume candle, most likely ignore, ignore it. You want to see like daily, like for the day, an hour, every minutes, maybe even 15 minutes, but a one minute or a five minutes, you kind of, you have to let it build. So yeah, be careful with those because a lot of the times you're going to see a big candle and you're going to chase it and it's going to come right back down. Have any other question? Yes. Hey, Kian. Uh, this is easy. My name is Akshay. Thanks, guys, for the class. This is really helpful. I just have a question based on something you, uh, I think you or the professor said. So I know you said like when we are trading, let's say Apple, watch the 
corresponding index, right? Let's say QQQ or even SPY. Um, I know a lot of traders also follow the VIX, uh, and I've been trying to kind of piece, you know, the dodge together by following VIX and DXY as well. But let's say you're just following QQQ and VIX along with your Apple, uh, along with Apple for your Apple trade. Do you look at one like is there a pattern where one follows the other? For example, VIX moves first and then SPY or Apple follow or Apple moves first based on VIX, like, is there some sort of flow or do they all just kind of move together pretty much? I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of traders today have noticed that VIX is broken. I feel like. I don't think VIX is moving correspondingly to how the market has been. So I kind of, I have two others. I mean, TNX is definitely one you should have on your list if you're looking at specifically tech stocks or stocks in general right because nx is interest rates right when interest rates go up it's not good for stocks so instead of having vix i would rather have tnx right now because vix is just moving in such a weird weird way that it almost doesn't really help you right it might actually you know hurt you more than help um now there are other indicators that you can dollar sign add, right? That shows the buying and selling pressure, right? So if let's say there's plus one thousand add, right? That means there's a lot of buying going on into the market, right? Now if there's negative one thousand add, that means there's a lot of selling going on in the market, okay? And same goes with Tick. You can use tick, right? So dollar sign tick, dollar sign slash tick Q for uh, NASDAQ, right? So your first thing is going to be QQQ or SPY, right? So if you're in a banks, you're, you're looking at SPY. If you're, lo- if you're in Apple or tech, you're looking at QQQ. We'll always have that on the side. Fix, yes, it does work for the most part, but We've had days where the market has been down over 2% and VIX is still red, right? That doesn't happen in a normal market, right? So I would definitely use PNX, which is the treasury bond, basically the interest rates, um, add, dollar sign add, and then dollar sign tick. That is what I use. And obviously uh, the ETF of whatever stock I'm trading. But if you notice actually today, in our shop trade, you know, obviously we didn't get that great of an entry. I mean, we are a little profitable today, but anyway, um, you notice once uh, QQQ broke this specific uh, resistance, you obviously saw shop push higher, right? So it follows the ETF, right? So always have the corresponding ETF next to the stock that you're trading. Okay. Yeah, that helps. Thanks a lot. No worries. Whenever it comes to like big uh, market moves, you uh, like notice in a sector, is it better to just target a specific stock rather than the like say an ETF focused on it, like semiconductors, for example? Yeah, absolutely. Because those semiconductors, uh, depending on the stock, those premiums can move much more than the ETF because the ETF has a little lower IV. Now, in today's market, SPY and QQ actually have pretty, pretty high IV, but you know, in general. Uh, the the stock would have more uh, movement in those premiums than uh, the ETF, unless you're playing the indice of SPF. Can you guys hear me by chance? Hmm? Oh, uh, I have a quick question as uh, from someone who has a smaller account. I only have a, about $3,000 in my account. And uh, it's unfortunately kind of just been staying there. I've had to reload here and there. But my main question is that I'm having issues with uh, with like consistent gains or consistently growing my account um and i feel like it has to do with execution of the place so i i i solely only take alerts from you guys um and i try my best to tp or take profits at like 15 25 percent but consistently with like the losses and the gains i feel like i'm not making much progress but fortunate enough that I'm not like taking major losses, but still I feel like my account isn't 
moving forward enough. And I was trying to see if if you guys have um you know any insight for someone who has a quite a small account um and how to perhaps better approach that or how you guys would approach that if you guys were to start from that number again. Yeah, it would be great if a member can chime in on this. Well, I can uh, try to help you out. I got a couple questions for you first. Are you standing at your, are you at your trading platform all day? And are you trading on your phone? Um, I'm on the computer and I'm usually, I'm on the West Coast. So probably I'll stay up until I would say maybe an hour before or two hours before my closes. I usually try not to, uh, use, that's usually that's when I start my other job. So my day job. So. All right. I want to chime in on this. Not only you, but there's a lot of other traders that kind of have the same issue. And what it is, is you come in and you take an alert, okay, and then you walk away from your screen or you're not around to see when Kean sells the alert or, or Elkin sells his alert, and you miss that sell. And then the next right. thing you know, you find yourself under the water. Right, right. Can I say, what if I, I'm on my screen all the way up until maybe an hour or two hours? So I'm, I'm following the alert pretty precisely like pretty on top of it um and would you do you have anything to say moving forward if that was the case because you know i'm i'm on top of it so that i don't lose the exit alert or even because i'm monitoring the trade as well as like waiting for the alert just in case uh you know things get a little bit sketchy and kian's like all right we should probably get out of here because it doesn't look too good so i'm on top of it in terms of like watching the alerts and watching uh the plays and Usually with my account size, I'm I'm only in like one or two play most of the time, so it's not really hard to you know manage. Okay, my next suggestion is: Are you setting physical stops? Are you just using mental stops and or putting stops in when you're there? Because if you're not setting physical stops that are according to your risk tolerance, then that might be why you're losing bigger than you're winning. They're usually around uh, 30, 35%. Um, that's, that's pretty standard, I would say. That's, that's around where I have it set at. And here's one more piece of advice, okay? So okay. You're, you're, you're falling down 35% on average. What are you winning? And um, see, so because, I'm, because of my account size, I'm, I'm only purchasing. I'm only risking maybe like... Well, because I'm trying to pick up a little bit more, I'm I'm risking 10% uh, of my account. Usually, that's going to be two plays, um, and I'm usually trying to take PP at 20%, 25%. Things go well, but I mean, uh, yeah, that's usually. Well, is that is that in your opinion a winning strategy that you're putting stops at like 30% and then you're only winning 25%? Right, I see. See, I see that it's discrepancy in the long run. Okay, I can see where that is true. So if you're consistently wanting, winning 25%, maybe you should put your stops at like 10%. See. Or hold your trades for a little bit longer. Maybe they'll mm -hmm. win a little more. Your winners, hold your winners, cut your losers. Kian, um, so your small account uh, alerts, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, would... Do you have any intentions on uh, perhaps resetting that, like doing like a, you know, going back to like 5,000 or, or whatever it may be? Um, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. I can absolutely do that. I gotta, Obviously, I gotta, whatever, I gotta, like the I, members, yeah, you know. I, I got to figure out. Um, no, I, I, can, I can do it. I just got, I just got to figure out the time on uh, when to do it. Um, once I, I'm kind of like in this groove. So. Uh, when I have this like type of feeling, I kind of just want to keep going. Um, but once I feel like where it's like, okay, maybe I should uh, start slowing it down. Don't want to feel like too cocky or anything. So um, probably soon in the next couple of weeks, I will start a lot, a lot smaller. Um, yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. No, I'm, it's just really appreciative that you guys have, like, you know, you guys have the small account alerts and as well as the large account alerts for people who don't have, like, a sizable account to trade, you know, take those trades. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I really appreciate it, uh, absolutely. you guys. Yeah, we, I mean, as you can tell, like, our large accounts, I don't even think, we barely post in that channel. I think it's all, I think the most is like four dollars or something i mean i've probably done one one thousand dollar contract but yeah it's like 99 percent small accounts but we want to cater to everyone we don't want people to feel left out hey whenever it comes to uh well i guess i'll use like the current example right now like ava had uh, towards end of day, like thrown out a lotto for Spy 3800 call again, expiry tomorrow. Uh, but you guys are like all like settled in on a bunch of different puts. How do you like evaluate like uh like whether? Because I mean, you're not you're not necessarily in doubt of like Ava's call necessarily what she was looking at at the time, right? Like, how yeah. is it that you like leverage like what you're seeing now into a put? compared yeah. to like her call in that that's that's a good question um and yeah it, it is it is hard sometimes where you know where i feel like mainly all my alerts are puts um and she puts out uh you know an spx 3800 call expecting the market will go up and yet i just alerted like a shop put snapchat put whatever um it just you know it comes down to what you're willing to risk, right? Like, again, I'm not going against Eva, right? She is playing that alert based on her thought process, and I'm playing my alerts on my thought process, right? So, you know, it comes down to, okay, so what do I think the market is going to do? Like, do I still feel more bearish leaning on Keon side? Or maybe, you know... The market can turn around and Snapchat, you know, for example, might post better advertising revenue uh, than expected. And maybe Eva is on the, the right side of this trade. Or, you know, if Eva posts that trade last and you're obviously, um, you know, let's just say you're in shop puts as well. You just have to decide, okay, well, I guess I can do both. One will win, one will lose. But you don't really want to do that because you're, risk you're still risking more, right? That's, it's like earnings too. It's like, well, I can buy a put and a call and one will win, one will lose. Well, you're still putting more risk into that trade, right? As a matter of fact, both of them can lose. So um, it is a good question. I mean, yeah, obviously it, it is weird sometimes where some one alert is bullish alert and one alert is a bearish alert, but you got to, but you got to think of it this way, right? S some puts are long dated puts, you know, March expiration, April expiration. And this call is tomorrow's expiration. So tomorrow the market could go up and you make money on Eva's puts. Yeah. Those puts, or I'm sorry, calls. And let's say the long dated puts, uh, are a little bit down. Well, you know that there's, you know, three months, four months in expiration, right? So you're able to hold those for longer because we you know we we've seen it right in the last couple of days um market had pushed up a little bit right and we had long dated puts but now it's pulling back um so we're able to take profits on those even though let's say eva alerts calls in the meantime right so you got to also look at the expiration dates on these alerts as well if that made any sense yeah, I get you. Like, yeah, you don't really have anything like set for expiry tomorrow because you you're also like accounting for like the fifty fifty of the of the earnings play, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it would be weird. It's like if Eva or Elkin or whatever, whoever alerted a QQQ call expiring ten twenty one, and then another uh, admin uh, alerted a QQQ put. Like, I don't think that will ever happen, right? It's not gonna be. A QQ put for tomorrow's expert. I don't think that will ever happen. Yes, there will be alerts for puts or calls three months out, and then the, first, the other person can buy a call or put you know, the opposite trade for tomorrow's expiration, but that won't really change 
um, the explanation or bias for the longer data to call her, but right, right, that would have just been a case of you or Elkin had the the lap, the monitor upside down, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, I guess uh, then one more. Uh, I don't know how uh, redundant this seems. Uh, so inverse of a EFT, whether like leveraged or not. So say Arc and Sark. Yep. Um. If you're seeing like the downtrend on Arc, is it better to play the put on Arc or the call on Sark? Uh, it, it depends. It, I mean, relatively, it's you know the same process, right? So obviously, if Arc is going down, uh, Sark is going up because they are literally the inverse. Now you got to look at obviously the contract that you're in, the expiration that you're in, because what if ARC has a much higher IV, right? Because IV moves the contra, the premiums. Right? The higher the premium, or the higher the IV, more the premiums. Right? And what if SARC has a lower IV? Right? You're so doing you're not Ellie. necessarily making money, more money on SARC than ARC. So you gotta, you, it really depends on the contract uh, that you're buying. Gotcha. So it's mostly on like premium moving potential then. Exactly. Exactly. Last questions. A quick watch list for tomorrow. If you do have questions, feel free. No, No rush. I got nothing to do. All right, let's quickly do let's let's do six stocks. Do six six stocks. All right. First one, type it out, someone quick. PR. PR? Yeah, PR. Okay. I've been looking at that one. I think I had like a call on it back when I started here. And like I had leveraged this one put on it. And I set the expiry out like two weeks later. And that thing has stayed up. Like, regardless of, like, whatever chaos has been happening, I've just been seeing it green every time I check back in on it. Definitely. So it's definitely made a run. Month. So whenever a stock is this high up, right, very extended, now obviously we have a resistance of high of the, high, the, high of the year. 9.48. Right, so that's gonna be your resistance. Right now, we do see this right here on this go back in ten. I know eight support. Right, so right now it's kind of in this. Right, we have a nine point four eight resistance, which is the high. And we have a nine point oh eight support because this is here. It didn't break next day, push down, right? Now there's like a support here as well. But if it does break 9.08, you can technically see 8.4. There is some support here, and I don't know how much volume I have on this chart, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, I would look for a break of the high of 9.48 and then support of 9.8. 08 on the daily now if you go on like the 15 minute right obviously we have 9.48 still you see how there was resistance here wix rejection rejection and then finally pushed higher right that's going to be your resistance uh intraday so 9.26 could be your uh, resistance for trading this stock 15 minutes Who's got next stock? Don't be shy. Come on. 
Shopify. Apple right. also. Apple, yeah, we'll do, we'll do Apple. Okay, so again, very easy to spot. Now we could we got the highs, right? Thirty point eight. We also see that when the market, so it was obviously dropping throughout the day. Held support around here, right? Twenty nine point six seven. You have a wick here at twenty nine point five three. Nine point five three. This wick. Now intraday is throwing the fifteen minute. I'm gonna. Obviously, I already know that 30.82 is the high, so I'm not even going to talk about that. I want to see this level, right? This was today when we alerted it. I knew that if we broke 30.26, it's going to get a little bit ugly for our trade, but it did reject. reject. Okay, So 30.26 is our resistance. So if you have no trade, right, these are the levels you want. Uh, look at now for us for ones with puts let's say shopify opens in this range right it has not moved it's just stuck here we want to break below 29.53 if it breaks below 29.53 we do have some resistance rejection here rejection here rejection here couldn't break here obviously you couldn't even get to this resistance so this it has all this gap to fill right Okay, so below 29.53, you can see 28.87 for target. Now, if it breaks above 30.26, well, if it has enough volume, you can go to the high of 30.8. This price right now. It's how tomorrow opens up but if the trade if Shopify opens here 29.53 is our magic number if we break below we got 28.87 okay so mg don't have a mic at the moment to cover the handful of platforms that don't offer straight up stop loss off yeah yeah robin yeah definitely any big broker like weeble thinkorswim interactive brokers Get on those brokers. Get out of Robinhood. I know it's such a simple platform, but the fills are, you know, weird. The stops, stop limit is the only option. Um, and you obviously want to start learning how to trade as well, right? So, you, you know, starting and softwares are just much more advanced and you want to get to that. But, I mean, you're, you're comfortable Robinhood and you're just placing the alerts and money left and right. That is up to you. I recommend Thinkorswim, Interactive Brokers, um, Weeble. That's the main one. You'll obviously use TradingView. Okay. EMG. Let's see where I had trouble breaking above. So this was 11.45. So CMG had a resistance at 1547.03, rejected and pushed down. We have some support here. Now you can always use old resistance as a new support. Okay. So we do have some resistance here, right? Multiple rejections. One, three, push down. Finally broke above. So once it broke above this resistance, we see how it pushed higher. Right. So we can use this as a new support. EMG, if it breaks below 15, 30.48. Well, we do have some support around here, which is around 15.22. This, I mean, this is an eight dollar move. Right. This will make you a good amount of money uh, if it fills here. And obviously, if it breaks 15 to 2.98. Well, you have this whole area right here, right? Okay. So break below 15.2298, go down to 15.13. Now, if it breaks above 15.47, you have some resistance here. Fix here, one right here, weak. Didn't break 
resistance here as well. So above 15.4703, there's really nothing else that's kind of stopping you until 15.53. So this would be your target for calls. And again, this is what makes you know trading um, easier, right? The more indicators you have, the more uh, confused you get, right? Now, the more advanced you get, obviously, you know, you can start using VWAP, the EMAs, all that stuff. But right now, if you're more of a beginner, just look at price action volume right simple support distance just see where the stock has been trouble or having trouble um either getting above the resistance or below or right then you can start then you can do end line right wedge actually a pretty good uh setup so you know in this in this type of pattern you want to wait until it gets to the edge here, right? Because once it breaks this pendant, it could either go up or it could either go down. But simpler terms, I will actually keep See how it opens some more. If it opens, definitely make a trade out of this. XOM. Okay, so XOM, I feel like with oil, Always starts hot, always dies down throughout the day. I feel like it's a very common, right? So we do have the high. 105. Okay, but we do have a resistance in right here, right? So 104.39. Okay, we do have a previous resistance around here. Okay, but we do not want to use that level. We want to see this support around. 103.39. We have been holding the support here, breaks below. Now it's acting as a new resistance, breaks above, right? Now we're back at this same level, 103.39. So if it breaks below 103.39, we do have this small wick as a support around 102.89. Below that, we can just go to the one. This whole gap flow right here now if it breaks above 104.39 with volume expected to push to 105 at the high okay so we'll be careful with oil and again we have to see where it op i mean right now it's like five ish oh it holds this level breaks above you got the high if it breaks below you have right here first at 108 have Three, five. Apple, guys. If you have any questions during this, please don't be afraid to ask. Hey, just to let you know, uh, in chat they also mentioned uh, CMG and XOM. Yes. Yep. Okay, so Apple. Have to say Thursday. Kind of have a resistance here, right? So one of. 145.89. Now it is down to 147 ish. Actually, where it kind of held that support. We do have a range of 145.89, 142.5. Now, I think tomorrow, pre market, it's going to be. Yeah, uh, extended hours are off. Yeah. Extended hours are off. I kind of just want to keep it clean. I don't like those little, like, weird uh, handles going. Um, yeah, so we have we do have this resistance above 145.89 and a support of 142.65. There is some support here of 142.16. And as a matter of fact, since it's at one, it's gonna use this support right here. 142.6. This could be a good entry as well. Resistance right here. Uh, just consolidating the 144.02 so you do have this this range right here so above 144.02 we got some resistance here at 144.97 and then it can actually push higher to 145.89 um below 142.16 you have a mini support at 141.5 and then it can push all the way down to the 140. obviously 140 is a psychological level which 
goes below that, then one thirty nines are. What's next? XOM, CMG, Apple, and Shopify. ASO. ASO, yeah. ASO is definitely a long term thing that we made. So, what I was seeing in this trade that did have a daily support broken. Right, so, 42.33 was for one bounce here, bounce 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 now it's kind of daily candle is going below we did also see a heavy put flow as well so that just adds more conviction our trade now if we are doing an intraday kind of messy right obviously you see major downtrend so that's why i kind of want to go more to the longer uh time frame you, know, you get held here held here breaking below here so if it if we see more continuation on the downside we'll look for the low of 40.9 i mean you have a small support here at 42.09 but i think it's go below um but yeah as, as far as a longer term uh trade i mean hopefully add Bounce here, bounce here, bounce here, but finally broke, broke through. So, or around forty-one point three seven. Baba, how do you determine when to enter a trade based on unusual whales? I will show you guys that once I am done. Baba. Or Obviously, we had the push for today, then the market faded. We see on Thursday, or well, I'm sorry, Wednesday, had trouble breaking this, right? 72.45. Look, it had trouble breaking it today uh, as well. So 72.45 is going to be our resistance. Okay, so if it could break 72.45, do have some resistance here at 72.5. Um, that's a very small target. So I would say where this held this support right here. So 73.1 is a spot today. Um, we do have a support here at 71.99. Held here, pushed higher. But again, if it breaks below 71.99, do have or at the 71.29 then the low so it's kind of just in this range a bit um but man I earlier in faded basically oh okay how do you determine trade base unusual but i Guys can see the flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's do SLB one that we made. So this is what happened on SLB. Okay. Now, when you see, well, first of all, when my flow was live, right? All of a sudden, I got all of these orders, 45 puts, 1021 expiration, 45 and a half. So that was the first thing. Okay. Second thing is when I'm seeing this type of size, 2400, 1400, 650, 1000, 932, right? Obviously, same amount of volume, outweighing open interest. 100k single order here you have a 56,000 26,000 42,000 
look at the time of these. They are literally at the exact same time, right? The exact same time. So I'm, before I enter the trade, I'm going to say, okay, this looks very interesting. I'm going to click this. Okay. So at 1130 or 1140 to 1145, the ask volume was at 13889 Okay. That, that five minutes was $589,000 worth of the 45 puts. When I saw that, I'm going to be like, okay, well, let's go back. So let me go here. Now we go to SLB. 11. 45, right? So 1145. I noticed on the 15 minute chart that there was a 45.62 support because earlier there was a rejection on the, the day before. It couldn't break. And once it broke, it pushed higher. Now we're back at that same level, right? It was breaking the 45.62. Once it broke, I mean, look at this sell. Look at the sell bar. We sold our contracts right here, right? Because there was a support here that bounced. This is why I trim and take profits, right? Because I know once I see this can, I'm like, okay, well, there's definitely buyers picking up. And my premiums are gonna, gonna disappear, right? So again, I see that type of flow. Consecutive orders, big size, big volume, over five hundred thousand dollars in that five minutes. That's what made me make the trades, and that happens a lot of the times. Now I do tweet a lot, right? Nine hundred thousand Amazon, five hundred thousand Tesla, whatever, right? But that's just for Twitter. When I alert, I'm backing it up with the charts because if Amazon, you know, for example. Uh, I mean, even though we play it today, but let's just say it was another day. Amazon gets five hundred thousand, you know, like a one ten put. The market's flat. Well, I'm not just going to enter it, you know, for no reason. Even though there's a big uh, put volume, I'm going to look at the chart to make sure is it actually worth playing because there could just be one guy that's just you know making a random bet and wants to play it, right? I always want the alerts. I always confirm it with charts. So that's basically how I determine when to enter a trade. Uh, using uh, the flow. And so on that unusual Wells window, when, when it showed that big green candle with the ask, uh -huh. was all of those orders were just slapping the ask right there. Correct. Yeah. So let's go back. So again, sometimes people make the mistake. Okay, yeah, so some people make the mistake, right? They see heavy, you know, uh, they look at this, right? The reason why I open up this contract because sometimes it could be at the bid volume, right? So basically that means they're either getting out of the contract or they're selling the 45 puts, okay? Which means it's actually bullish, right? So they're on the wrong side of the trade. So when I notice that this is a massive R of ask side, Right, as you can see, it's thirteen thousand ask volume to eleven hundred bid volume. This is an opening trade, so they're buying forty-five puts. So that's exactly why I bought it, right? And I know that they're buying the puts rather than selling. And as you can see here, right, the put volume obviously outweighs the call volume. Make more sense? Yeah, I just wanted confirmation on that because, sure. you know, that's that's one thing that that you know it was hard for me to grasp at first was like when you see people hitting the ask, that means they really want to get into that trade. Versus if they're hitting the bid, they are selling for premium or they're selling to close. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. yep. You always want to make sure it's the ask if you want to actually.
Uh, do you ever take into account, or if you're able to identify if they've rolled a position? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, you look at the next day volume open interest, right? So see if it's carried over, right? Or what you can do is actually go into the trade itself. Click the details. See here. I mean, obviously, it's not going to show here right now, but you'll be able to see if they've actually um, rolled their position. If you actually click on the contract details, we're going to I'll, I'll show you tomorrow. Someone's going to remind me uh, what we can do. We can do. Uh, SLB flow again tomorrow uh, and I'll be able to show you if they've actually rolled their contract to a different expiration. I don't have this platform. I use Fidelity and you can see the open interest on the um, where you're uh, buying your options. When do they update that? Is it is it apply to every uh, different um, platform? Like is it at midnight the next day or or uh, like 6 a.m. the next day? For me, I when I open it, I uh, it's right when market opens. So if I'm in, like, let's just say I, I'm in uh, those a ASO puts, right? Once market opens, I'll type up ASO. I'll go back to, you know, I'll go back to the trade. So let's say well, it's Friday, right? Let's say it was the 30 puts for June 16. So tomorrow, I'm going to see if this volume carried over. I'm not going to check at midnight or whatever. Um, when market opens at, at 930, that's when I check um, if it's carried over. Okay. Yeah, this is another good example. 1.24 million. The big bar. We actually alerted it was around 870,000. Ass side. The ASO started tanking. Yeah. I had another question. If if you see, if, if, like, let's just take this for example. Um, I'll call it luck. But last Friday there was there was a lot of volume for Nike. Eighty nine calls. Yep. for for tomorrow's expiration and i was just like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna hit that so i bought a couple contracts holding over the weekend when when you see something like that that may be you know a week two weeks out are you do you expect that move to happen the next day you know the next hour or is it just you know you're getting in that trade and obviously if you saw it today for tomorrow expiration you're expecting the move you know, pretty quickly. But if it's a week or two week out, are you expecting that move, you know, within a day or two? I would say yes, because you don't want to get burned on theta decay. But what, what are your thoughts on that? That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example of that. Um, I think EK was an example, um, or B, BX. That flow hit three million in premium in like eighty five puts or eighty puts, and that was a June expiration at like eight eight months, eight months expiration. Okay, it was like three million in premium put premium. Now, obviously, when you when you have time like that, you know if it's not going your way for a couple of days, well, you know you have eight months left in expiration, right? So yeah, it might not it might not happen overnight, but it can, it absolutely can, right? Like that that BX trade actually happened, I think two days later. Even though they were buying, uh, June expiration, two days later, I think it dropped like five six percent. Um, so it, you know, when I look at the the flow and I see, like for example, Snap. I think it was, yeah. it was, we alerted it Monday, right? And, and tomorrow's Friday, so it's been almost a week. It hasn't been moving really that much for four days. But on Monday, it was like 450000 in premium for the March expiration, right? right. Now, okay, it, it, might, it might be a bad example because 
Snap was an earnings play. But I took the trade because you have till March. The seven strike is cheap. 450000 at the ask was getting hit. Right? You have time. I bought a seven put expiring Friday and snap hit 11 today. That, that put's gone. Right? Ivy sucked out. Beta eating it up. Right? So it, it, that, like, it really, I wouldn't say just because, um, it's like a three month, four month out expiration. It's not going to move the next day or two days later. Um, but it can't, it for sure can't. How long do you hold a contract that's months out when it's negative? Do not worry about it being negative due to how long you're holding the contract. So there's two things, right? Obviously, if you know how to read the chart, like read charts, um, that's obviously an advantage. You know that, okay, well, if I'm in puts and it breaks above this resistance on the daily, well, you're expecting more upside, right? So that's one advantage. Know how to read the chart. It's not solely okay, but you can always ask us. Um, Another question you have to ask, same thing for a weekly contract. How much are you willing to risk, regardless of how long that contract has for expiration, right? That contract is down 40%. Maybe your account can't take, you know, holding it longer for another month, right? Maybe you just need to get out of that trade because you never know. You never know. That, that negative 40% and you stopped out might have been the greatest decision because that contract, even though it had six months, Expiration, it could be down 80%, right? But on the other side, you stopped out 40%, you have six months, eight months expiration, and then let's say three days later, something happens and it's that contract is up 40%. Well, no one can tell the future, right? No one knows. So that's just, uh, that's just the reality, right? You just have to always, again, ask yourself, how much am I willing to risk on this trade? How long can I hold this trade for? And if I do have the advantage of reading daily charts, weekly charts, I can base my decision on a specific resistance or support or EMA, um, et cetera. So that's how I would uh, go about it. How do you gauge when an unusual trade is something to look into? Yeah, so I mean, just, just uh, we were just like talking about uh, SLB, right? How, how unusual this was. I'm looking at flow, and all of a sudden, as you can see, at the same exact time, 11.41 at 55 seconds. All right, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to make you repeat yourself. Um, I meant like, uh, oh, okay, uh -huh. like one, one odd buyer. Okay. Yeah, one odd buyer. I, it, it, it's, I, I don't like it. I don't. Uh, but if there's just that one buyer of two hundred thousand, then okay, maybe like I'll look into it. I'll actually click on that trade to see if there's actually any more, um, open trades either before that or added, right? Um, mm -hmm. but I do like to see multiple orders, like five or six more orders on top of that. So, um. Yeah, there might be like a like a now if there's like a two million dollar order, a single order, well, that might be hard to pass up because someone knows something, right? right. But let's say it's like a two hundred thousand dollar order, like this one right here, this one hundred thousand dollar order. Let's just ignore all these ones. If I just saw this one hundred thousand dollar order with twenty four hundred size, it would catch my eye, but it wouldn't be something that I would be fully confident in entering. You know, this is what makes me confident. The consecutive gotcha. sweep. Uh, but let's just say there's a $3.2 million order on AMD 50 puts for next week. Well, shit. Some, someone knows something for sure. Okay. So it's really just has to be like the premium going counter to a flow. Exactly. Correct. Okay.
Hey, Kian, I have a one quick question. How do yes. we check I change? Like, I know in US it's difficult to see because they update at the end of the day, right? You don't have any uh, comparison. Time, I, think, I think it broke it broke up a bit. Now, how do we check the OI change? Like, you know, when we are buying uh, calls or ports or... Oh, 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 I, yeah. oh, the open interest? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, obviously look at the chain of your... Of, you know, let's say Thinkorswim, right? Mm -hmm. Thinkorswim. Mm -hmm. Here, let me show you. Go to... So let's say, so obviously you want to have your layout as you want to have the open interest volume, right? Well, let's say you're in November 17 and a half puts, right? So you see open interest is 2200 and you see the volume is 100. So tomorrow, obviously, you know, maybe you have to write this down in your notes, right? Uh, or just you remember these numbers. Uh, so tomorrow you want to see if these increased or decreased. Right, so that's how you can check uh, open interest and volume on uh, Thinkorswim. And then obviously, if you want to look at a specific contract, it's right here. Yeah, but then do they update this? Like, uh, not every hour does it get updated, or how does it get updated? Or, uh, I don't think it's updated every hour. I mean, I, I, I actually don't really pay attention to open interest and volume throughout the day on specific on tracks i mean obviously unusual whales like you know it will show me but on tos i haven't really stared at the open interest and volume you know, for me it's more overnight where i know i'm swinging these contracts so i want to see if they're actually holding um but i wouldn't really completely focus on you know let's say you're in a intraday trade right and let's okay. say you're you're in a 17 and a half run put and you see that the volume is a 100, you know, don't get scared. Or if the open interest is at 2200, right? And you're in an intraday trade where it's like a day trade, you don't want to be worried that, let's say, the open interest goes from 2200 to 2150, right? That's not going to really do anything. Matt. So for open interest and volume, I, I definitely look overnight to see if they hold these contracts. Okay. No, just this is for because if you want to carry over the position overnight, you know. Correct. So does it really? Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank I, you. I don't. I don't. I don't think that you find out until the next morning. Cause I, I actually took notes on on the, the Nike contracts over this past weekend, and it didn't change until Monday morning. I was up at, you know, six a.m. Monday morning looking at it, and it had already updated, but. Obviously, it didn't update until yeah. sometime probably 3 a.m. Eastern time, midnight Pacific time when it reset. That's what I'm guessing. But um, no, it doesn't update during the day. Talk about NTNX. Yes, like low play and I on something. It might be a merger or acquisition in play. So for you... So this was definitely another unusual play that was going on, right? So today, 32 and a half calls were getting swept up like crazy. You see an unusual buyer of 167,000 with 2,200 size, the 89,000 with 1,000 size. So it's been a consecutive orders of 32 and a half calls. And later in the day, more calls coming in right so again wait oh shit sorry sorry sorry, sorry. Uh, my bad my thank you for whoever said that uh, yeah it's still showing there right. we go okay there we go so as we saw i actually didn't oh i did yeah, yeah. Well, i guess hey like, um you can see the 32 and a half calls started getting swept up right we saw these coming in then this caught my eye Right. On top of all of these um, 32 and a half calls for December, we get another one. 2,200 in size, 167,000 
this order, right? And throughout the day, another sweepers, right? 32 and a half calls, more coming in. Just non stop, right? So I'm like, okay, well, man, insane, right? I mean, the call volume 27,000 to 1,000 uh, put volume. I open up the trade at the bid, $1.5 million worth, over 20,000 in volume compared to 1,500 uh, OI. I did look up, and there's some link. I gotta find that link. I don't know where I got it from. Obviously, call volume. Completely outweighs the, the put volume, so this really sparked um, my interest. So again, it was just another flow like this, where it's like just consecutive orders were coming on my screen, seeing an unusual order of twenty two hundred in size and one hundred sixty seven thousand on top of all the other orders. So that is why I uh, entered this NT next, and it was actually showing relative strength compared to the market uh, fading uh throughout the day so when that happens as well and when these premiums you know not really moving some there's something going on right so relative strength in the market when everything else is fading um definitely you know uh persuaded my my decision of these alerts hopefully make money on this trade. i think we will we will is that merger rumor news was that put out today? Is that why all those were bought up, or was is this something that's been? I think it's an anticipation. I yeah, I think it's been in the works, um, and it just might be coming out soon. I'll send you guys the link. I think I have it on my phone. My phone's not with me right now, um, but there is some sort of merger or ac uh, acquisition or buyout or something like that. I was I was reading it up, um, and then when I saw the flaws, like well, does that makes sense. Okay. Now don't full port this, you know, this call. No. <laughs> don't, please don't full port this. Full porter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this flow obviously catches my eye and there's a reason why I alerted it. So, right. It might not work out tomorrow, but let's say in a week. I mean, we've got December expiration. Right. Let's do one more question. I'm going to Someone say forward. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> well, let's end it there. We'll we'll definitely have more of these classes. You know, we can figure out what type of classes we can, we can throw. But I appreciate you guys participating, joining. I know whenever I say uh, classes be recorded. No one shows up, but I really appreciate you guys all showing up. Let's uh let's make some money tomorrow. Thanks guys. Good job, Keith.